Today's lesson is Christmas in Strasbourg, a festive winter getaway. Hi, everybody. I'm Roger. Hello, I'm Kiki. And today we're going to continue talking about Strasbourg, which is a city in Europe. It's just across the river from Germany. And yes, you should check out this place during the winter because it has a great Christmas festival, which we'll talk about today. But last time we talked about some of the attractions. Of Strasbourg, we talked about starting off with a tour of the historic city center, the Grand Island. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and of course, there's a museum there where you could check out some artifacts. And the palace itself, which is the museum, is a masterpiece of French Baroque architecture as well. So if you're into that sort of thing, you should definitely take some pictures. And we also talked about the Strasbourg Cathedral. Right, it's next to the palace, and if you like Gothic architecture, the most beautiful Gothic cathedrals in Europe is supposed to be the Strasbourg Cathedral. So it has a lot of delicate and intricate features. And it has sculptures that tells us vivid stories of the past. So if you're really, really excited and you want to see this Gothic cathedral, you should come and visit Strasbourg Cathedral. Yep, and you can have a really nice view of the city from the viewing platform in the cathedral. But today we're going to talk about some other features and some other attractions of Strasbourg. So let's get to it. Let's listen to the first part of our lesson, and we'll come right back. After checking out the cathedral, head to the western side of the Grand Island for a visit to Little France. In this picturesque neighborhood, traditional half-timber houses and wandering canals create scenes straight out of a fairy tale. The Tanner's House, built in 1572 and now a restaurant, is perhaps the most famous example of the neighborhood's distinctive medieval architecture. 大家好。第一部分首先介绍形容词 picturesque， 它的意思是风景如画的，或是古色古香的。例如 ，Carla spent the summer in a picturesque village. Carla 在一个风景如画的小村庄度过夏天。又或者说 ，The writer rented a picturesque house to finish his novel. 这位作家租了一间古色古香的小屋来完成他小说的写作。接下来是形容词 medieval， 也可以念作 medieval。它的意思是中世纪的，比如说 ，a beautiful medieval castle can be found in this small European town. 可以在这个欧洲小镇上找到漂亮的中世纪城堡。或是 ，many of the people who came to the harvest festival were dressed up in medieval clothes. 许多参加丰收节的人们身穿中世纪风格的服装。Let's talk about the first part of today's article. After checking out the cathedral, head to the western side of the Grand Island for a visit to Little France. So, after you've visited the cathedral, which is this big Catholic church, you can go to the western side of the Grand Island, and the Grand Island is pretty much the city center, and that's where we should start visiting. And on the western side, there is an area called Little France. Indeed, and in this picturesque neighborhood, traditional half-timber houses and wandering canals create scenes straight out of a fairy tale. So again, we're going to the western side of Grand Island. We're going to To a place called Little France, and we're describing this place as being very picturesque. If something's picturesque, well, it looks like a picture. It looks like a really nice landscape painting. It's visually attractive. It's beautiful. It's quaint. It's pretty. And yes, indeed. Of course, if you travel to Europe, you want to see those picturesque villages. There are lots of picturesque villages by the sea in Greece or in Italy, for example. They're great for taking pictures. And yes, indeed, this neighborhood is very picturesque. So have your cameras ready. It's got these half timber houses, which are traditional. If something's half timber, well, it's half made out of wood and then with something else. And in this neighborhood, not only does it have half timber houses, they also have wandering canals, which creates a scene straight out of a fairy tale. So when you come here, you're walking around Little France, you're enjoying these half timber houses. There are also these 
canals that go through this neighborhood. So canals are artificial rivers that are sculpted throughout the city. So as you're walking through this neighborhood, you'll see that there's a lot of these little water streams or little rivers that go through the alleys or the roads. So while you're walking around visiting this neighborhood, you'll also enjoy water. Exactly, and the canals are not straight in a grid pattern. They're wandering, which means they kind of curve around, and it makes the place look really beautiful. And you'll swear that you're in the middle of a fairy tale. You expect a knight in shining armor to come riding toward you on a horse, or a damsel in distress waiting there for her hero to come and rescue her. So yes, indeed, you'll have scenes straight out of a fairy tale. Let's talk about a particular structure. The Tanner's House, built in 1572, and now a restaurant, is perhaps the most famous example of the neighborhood's distinctive medieval architecture. So this is a particular work of architecture called the Tanner's House. It was built a long time ago in 1572, but it's now a restaurant. If you're lucky, of course, you'll be able to get a table, but I imagine you'll have to make reservations several weeks in advance. But it's the most famous example of the neighborhood's distinctive medieval architecture. Something's distinctive; it's very easily identified. If you see it, you can go, "Oh, yes, that house, that building. It is made in medieval architecture. It's using some type of medieval architecture that existed a long time ago." Medieval here just refers to the Middle Ages. This word is kind of tricky to pronounce. Some people say. Medieval, which is four syllables, medieval, but、uh, I tend to kind of scrunch those two syllables together and just say medieval, three syllables. That takes us to the end of the first part. Let's have a listen of part two. And should you be lucky enough to visit Strasbourg in December, don't miss out on the city's famous Christmas market, first held in 1570. As the holiday draws near. The heart of the city transforms into a winter wonderland, filled with twinkling lights and the delightful aroma of various seasonal snacks, including mulled wine, fresh pretzels, and Christstollen, all of which show the considerable German influence on Strasbourg's culinary culture. With charming stalls selling a wide range of gifts and treats, the market's festive spirit truly embodies the magic of the season. 第二部分，我们来介绍动词 twinkle， 它的意思是闪烁或是闪耀。在课文中 ，twinkling 为现在分词做形容词用，表示闪耀的。例如 ，The twinkling stars made the night seem peaceful。闪闪发亮的星星让夜晚显得宁静。或是 ，The child's eyes twinkled when he smiled。那位小孩微笑时，眼睛闪闪发光。接着看到形容词 culinary， 它是烹饪的意思。例如。The cookbook was written by a culinary expert. 这本食谱是由一位烹饪专家撰写的。或者 ，Jeff's culinary skills are remarkable. Jeff 的厨艺很了不起。再来介绍 stall 这个名词，指的是摊位或是货摊。我们可以说 ，Many of the stalls by the side of this road sell fast foods such as hot dogs. 这条路两旁的许多摊贩都在贩卖如热狗般的速食。或是。Singapore has a lot of amazing food stalls selling Indian and Malaysian food. Singapore 有很多很棒的摊贩贩售印度和马来西亚美食。接下来看到动词 embody， 它是体现或是表现的意思。我们可以说 ，The musical work embodies the style and spirit of the Baroque period. 这个音乐作品具体展现了巴洛克时期的风格与精神。又或者。The Great Gatsby is a novel that embodies the spirit of America in the 1920s. 大亨小传是部体现一九二零年代美国精神的小说。Okay, let's continue with our tour of Strasbourg. Again, we're visiting. The Grand Island. We've gone to Little France, and we've also checked out the Tanner's House, which is now a restaurant. And of course, it features distinctive medieval architecture. And here in the second part, it says, "And should you be lucky enough to visit Strasbourg in December, which is right now, don't miss out on the city's famous Christmas market, first held in 1570." So that, of course, has been going on for 500 years. 
And if you're lucky enough to be there in December, well, you should not miss out on this Christmas market. So, should you be lucky enough? Should here means if you're lucky enough. So, should you be lucky enough to be there in December, then you shouldn't miss out. You shouldn't pass up the opportunity to see this famous Christmas market. As the holiday draws near, the heart of the city transforms into a winter wonderland filled with twinkling lights and the delightful aroma of various seasonal snacks, including mulled wine, fresh pretzels, and Kristallen, all of which show the considerable German influence on Strasbourg's culinary culture. So we know that Strasbourg is right across from Germany, separated by the Rhine River. So some of its culture is influenced by German culture as well. So we can see there are some German cuisine as well. Now, as the holiday draws near, this means that the holiday or Christmas is. Coming near us, or the time is getting closer to us, the heart of the city transforms into a winter wonderland. So the heart of the city, where everybody goes to, the busy part of the city, it turns into a winter wonderland with lots of lights and the delightful aroma. Here we see the word twinkling lights, and usually when something is twinkling, it twinkles, it shines, or it's. Sparkles, so it's flashing, and you see these flashing Christmas lights. Right, and of course, twinkling does mean lights kind of get bright and then they get dim, and、uh, that's similar to sparkling. But to me, sparkling means there are lots of those lights getting bright and dim rather quickly. But twinkling could refer to smaller lights, more spread out, like the stars in the sky. And of course, we have the song "Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star." But again, we've got twinkling lights there. They're Christmas lights, and we've also got the delightful aroma of various seasonal snacks. If something's delightful, well, it delights you and makes you feel very happy. And in this particular case, you've got the aroma or the smell of these seasonal snacks. There, aroma is a nice way to say something smells good. An odor is bad. Oh, you've got body odor. Why don't you go take a shower? You really stink. But in this particular case, we're talking about the delightful aroma of those various seasonal snacks. And we've got some examples here. Mulled wine. What is mulled wine, Kiki? Mulled wine is basically when you have a mixture of wine and fruits, different seasonal fruits, and you'll boil it slowly over heat, and all these flavors from these fruits will go into this wine. Oh, it sounds very tasty, especially on a cold winter's day. You can also get fresh pretzels. And then we've also got a seasonal snack by the name of Kristallen, which of course is another example of seasonal snacks that you can have. And all of these show the considerable German influence on Strasbourg's culinary culture. So yes, indeed, you can go to this town. Probably to have both French and German cuisine, and who knows if you're homesick, you might find a Chinese restaurant or two, maybe even in the central area there. But、uh, hey, why waste your time having food you're familiar with? Check out some of those local delicacies, both the French ones and the German ones, because hey, Germany is just across the Rhine River, on the other side. So the word culinary means something to do with cooking or to make some food. Usually, when we talk about somebody's culinary skills, it's how good they are at cooking or making a dish. And in this case, when we talk about culinary culture, we're talking about this culture's love of food or how they make their recipes, what makes their food unique to their culture. Indeed, I always look forward to traveling to Hong Kong to enjoy the culinary delights there. They've got、uh, all sorts of different kinds of restaurants there. They've got Cantonese food. They've got Shanghai. They've got Beijing. They've got everything. So I really enjoy the culinary delights in Hong Kong. But hey, we're in Strasbourg, and you can enjoy the culinary delights of German food along with French food, and maybe there's some Italian food around there somewhere too. With charming stalls selling a wide range of gifts and treats, the market's festive spirit truly embodies the magic 
of the season. So we've got these charming stalls, which are small little places that sell things. Of course, if you go to night markets here in Taiwan, there are hundreds of stalls selling all sorts of things, all sorts of kinds of snacks and food and stuff like that. In this case, they've got different stalls selling all sorts of gifts and treats. So you can buy a gift to bring back to your family or your friends, and of course, you can enjoy some treats. Which are kind of snacks you have between meals, and this place also has this festive spirit, which embodies the magic of the season. What does the word embody mean? Embody is to really represent or give off this meaning of a certain situation. So when you embody something, you want to represent or showcase the nature of something. Right, so you can really capture the festive spirit. You can experience the celebratory atmosphere of this place. You'll really feel that Christmas is coming, and you'll be really glad that you came at this time of year. And not so much during the summer. Traveling during the winter can be a lot of fun as well. Okay, that brings us to the end of the second part of our lesson for today. Let's wrap things up now by listening to the third and final part. When it comes to Christmas, the charm of Strasbourg truly cannot be overstated. With its remarkable tapestry of history, culture, and seasonal cheer, there is no better place for an extraordinary winter getaway that's nothing short of magical. 最后第三部分，来看到片语 be nothing short of， 有简直是点点点的意思。例如 ，the show that we saw at the circus was nothing short of amazing. 我们在马戏团看的那场表演简直是精彩极了。或者 ，The meeting today was nothing short of a disaster. 今天的会议根本就是一场灾难。Let's talk about the final part of our adventure in Strasbourg. When it comes to Christmas, the charm of Strasbourg truly cannot be overstated. So, when we think about Christmas, Strasbourg really embodies, or it really represents, what Christmas. Means or what it feels like, so it cannot be overstated. So if you say that when I think of Strasbourg, I think of Christmas, it's not an overstatement. So what this cannot be overstated just means that it couldn't be more true. Right, to overstate just means to say something too strongly. You're exaggerating, but in this particular case, it can't be overstated. You can't say enough about this place. It is that wonderful. It is that great. A similar phrase. Would be cannot be underestimated, which means you cannot overestimate it because it's such a great thing. You can never say too many things about it. You could go on for years talking about the charm of this place. It can't be overstated, and with its remarkable tapestry of history, culture, and seasonal cheer, there's no better place for an extraordinary winter getaway. That's nothing short of magical. So this wraps things up here. Of course, we're saying it has a remarkable tapestry of history, culture, and seasonal cheer. If something's remarkable, it's something that needs to be talked about. It's really, really great. It's really, really profound. Really significant. And of course, that's from the word remark, which means to say something about something because it does stand out. It does need to be talked about. So yes, it's remarkable. It's really noticeable. It's really significant. We've got a tapestry of various things: history, culture, and seasonal cheer. Now, a tapestry usually is kind of like a rug that's hung on the wall, and the rug, of course, has lots of designs. It's a work of art. Right, and tapestry sometimes showcases a story as well. And here, there's no better place for an extraordinary winter getaway. That's nothing short of magical. So when you come here, come to Strasbourg for Christmas, it is such a magical experience. There's no better place to go, and it's just extraordinary. So when something's extraordinary, it just means it's different from the ordinary. It's different from what we know. It's just so amazing. It gives people a surprise when something. 
everything is extraordinary. And this is just an amazing winter getaway for people to come and visit. And when something is short of something, or in this case, nothing short of magical, it means that it's just so close to being magical, you really believe that magic exists. Yes, it's totally magical. You cannot describe it in any other way. It's a fairyland. It's a wonderful place to go. And so, of course, we advise you go there as soon as you can and enjoy the Christmas season there. Okay, that brings us to the end of our discussion. Here comes Hanny. And should you be lucky enough to visit Strasbourg in December, don't miss out on the city's famous Christmas market. 如果你有幸在十二月造访史特拉斯堡，别错过这座城市著名的圣诞市集。好，那看到前半句，他用到 should you be lucky enough。点点点，那这个句型啊，它是省略了 if， 并将助动词 should 移到句首的倒装句。那我们先来介绍一下 should 用在 if 子句里，那个句型会是 if 主词加上 should 加原形动词，逗号点点点点点，去表达万一怎么样怎么样的话，要是如果怎么样怎么样的话，那这是用来表达未来发生的可能性很小的情况，隐含着对于发生的可能性保持强烈怀疑，但是又不。排除可能性的那种语义，那在比较正式的用法当中，常常会省略 if， 并且把 should 移到主词前面，写作 should。主词加动词，逗号点点点点。像文中的这个 Should you be lucky enough？ 它就是由 If you should be lucky enough 点点点去改写而来的。那至于主要子句的部分啊，可以用主词加上 will、can 或是 may 等等加上原形动词，或者是用主词加上 would、could、might 等等再加原形动词。也可以像课文就是用祈使句的方式表达。举例来说。If you should need more information, please feel free to contact us. 如果您需要更多资讯，欢迎与我们联系。那这个句子也可以写成 Should you need more information, please feel free to contact us. 再看一个例句 ，If you should have any questions, you can give us a call anytime. 那也可以说 ，Should you have any questions, you can give us a call anytime. 要是您有任何问题，随时都可以打电话给我们。好，那在同一个段落最后一句提到，有吸引人的摊位贩售各式各样的礼物和美食。那文中是用 a wide range of gifts and treats 来表达各式各样的礼物和美食。Range of 它表示一系列的什么东西，那我们可以用 a wide range, a whole range, a broad range 或是 a full range of 再加名词去表达种类多元的什么东西，各式各样的什么东西。举例来说 ，The shop sells a broad range of toys. 那间店有卖各式各样的玩具。好，那也补充其他可以表达各式各样的说法。第一个呢，可以用到 a variety of 加名词去表达各种什么，各式各样的什么。Variety 的前面也可以加上形容词，像 wide、large、great 等等。例如 ，There are a wide variety of food options on the menu. 菜单上有各式各样的食物可以选。那第二个用法是 all kinds of, all sorts of, 或是 all types of， 还有 all manner of， 可以表达各式各样的什么。那特别注意 manner 在这个用法当中固定用单数哦。像如果我们说 all manner of musical instruments， 就是表达各式各样的乐器。好，以上是今天重点整理，我们回顾一下单词吧。Canal. While walking along the canal, Lorena saw several people fishing from the bank. Distinctive. Clarissa has a distinctive fashion sense that combines classic and modern styles in unexpected ways. Delightful. Stella sent Travis a text saying that she'd had a delightful time at his party the night before. Culinary. Exploring diverse culinary traditions allows us to taste unique flavors. And experience cultures from afar. Stall. Stephen has a stall at the farmers market where he sells a variety of jams. Remarkable. 
The doctor's remarkable discovery represents a major advance in medical research. Extraordinary. The extraordinary student achieved top grades while also shining in sports and music. Discussion starter starts now! Here's our discussion starter for today. The question is, in general, do you prefer visiting historical sites like cathedrals and castles or doing activities like going to Christmas markets? Why? I have a trouble picking because I like them both. I love to see historical artifacts and historical sites, but I just love Christmas and I love visiting Christmas markets because of the festivities. You really feel like you're in this winter wonderland and I like to immerse myself in this winter wonderland. So I think in this case, I would choose Christmas markets. Well, I like Christmas markets. They're pretty fun, but I primarily prefer visiting historical sites like castles and cathedrals. I like uh, history and I like uh, architecture. I like checking that stuff out. And besides, if I go to a Christmas market, I'm probably going to end up buying a lot of junk and we already have enough junk in our house here in Taipei. I don't really think we need anything else. Well, that brings us to the end of another edition of our program. And please make sure you join us again next time. From all of us here, I am Roger. I am Kiki. See, See you, you next time. time.